This is the Arduino GPS watch I just finished making. Mounted on the outside of a leather cuff, I've got uh, OLED display, a Pro Trinket with 3 volt with a battery pack on the top, and a uh, Adafruit Ultimate GPS. All the components are from Adafruit. I've got a, on the front, I've got two buttons and a RGB LED and a temperature sensor mounted on a perforated board. Between the two leather cuffs, I've got all the wire, including the battery. You can see a 400 milliamp battery right there. To put the watch on, just two snaps. That's it. Um, looks all right. Turned out a little thicker than I wanted to. Probably use too heavy a wire on the inside. That's all right. Um, there's two. I just have a wire fastener here so I can take the outer cuff off in case I have to get underneath and saw it or something. Just want to take you through some of the features. So this is the time. Right now the GPS is off, and with the GPS off, the, the trinket is keeping track of the time just by counting milliseconds that have passed since it last knew what the GPS time was. You can go through here. This is a temperature sensor, so right now it's reading almost 26 degrees Celsius under the lights. It's pretty warm, but that's all right. This is another screen that I've got to display the time, so it's um, it leaves the bottom half of the screen open for some GPS stuff if the GPS was turned on. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to turn the GPS on. So right now the GPS is enabled. I also added the ability to uh, have a flashlight. So this uh, this is you know full bright white and uh, it'll light up a dark room if you need it. So right now the GPS is on, and uh, one of the one of the features that I added was the ability to go to a coordinate mark it and then have it tell you how to return to that coordinate as you're moving around so i'm just going to zoom in a little bit here hopefully you can see the screen so right now it's telling me that to return to the coordinate that i have marked i've got to walk northeast um, 35 degree bearing for six meters uh, right now this is just within this is just another room in my house but i was able to uh, test this at you know over 100 kilometers and it works fine it uses uh, couple different functions. It uses something called the Haversine function to get the uh, the bearing between two lot long coordinates and great circle to uh, get a uh, an estimate on the distance between those two coordinates. And uh, the very bottom line is uh, the direction and and speed. If I was moving it would tell me what that my direction was. This isn't a compass. It only knows what direction it's traveling. It doesn't know what direction it's facing. So that's the current coordinates. Uh, again, it's telling me that I'm moving zero kilometers an hour and I don't have a heading right now, which is fine. This is a screen that's telling me how many satellites I'm seeing. So it's telling me 10 satellites each off of 0.9, which is really good for indoors, and uh, elevation of 124 meters. Uh, this is a, the coordinate that I've marked. This is just another screen. It tells me again that I've got to walk northeast for six meters. In, the, in this part of the screen right here, I've left it blank. If I was moving, there would be an, a line that points in the direction that I would need to go to get back to that coordinate. So it's, it's not relative to north, it's relative to the direction that I'm traveling. If I was moving, the, there would be a little line that would be appearing in, that, in the right half of the screen. So I go ahead and I can clear that coordinate. So I, it'll ask me if I mark, want to mark another one. I'm going to say no. So now if I go back to this screen that I was at before, it just shows me my current coordinates, number of satellites, which is 10, each drop of 0.9, and the heading and ground speed if I was moving. I'm just going to put this aside for right now. And uh, the other thing I meant, didn't mention is that um, I mentioned about the time, getting the correct time. The, the, right now the GPS is disabled, so as I said, this thing is just counting milliseconds. If the GPS is enabled, it just uses the time that's coming straight off the GPS. But the the trinket will lose, you know, one or two seconds an hour, just based depending on uh, what I'm doing with the button. Sometimes if you press a button, that kind of stops a the counter, then you lose time. So at the top of every hour, I turn the GPS on, and for about 20 seconds, and then I then I shut it off through software, and that's enough to emit the time to the trinket to to update the time. Um, how the GPS keeps track of the time, even if it's indoors, the, all the GPS has to be, it, it just has to be enabled and then um, 
it's got a it's got a coin cell battery in the bottom and it also has a real-time clock so it always keeps track of the time and as soon as the GPS is on it'll start emitting that either the satellite time if it can get a fix or the uh, the time from its real-time clock so which is is still more accurate than what the uh, the trinket is keeping time as you'll notice that right now it's it's red that means it's lit um, what I've noticed is that if I'm enabling and disabling it through software if I disable it at when that when the when the LED is blinking on that means it's gonna stay on so I what I have to do I have to do that there so now it's off so good another kind of cool thing is that uh, you may have just seen it there's a red light that blinks underneath I'll shut this off so there's underneath here there's a green light and it's kind of kind of a neat effect how the uh, the soldering on the trinket catches that green and on uh, when the minute changes there's also a pin 13 it, there's a red light underneath I light that up for I think two seconds and then shut it off just for a you know, neat effect so I'm gonna put this aside and I'm gonna show you what goes into making this um, on, a, on a prototype board it's gonna zoom in a little bit so these are the buttons they're really kind of hard to work with because the legs are thin and bendy and hard to mount so I, I mounted those beforehand this is the GPS same one as what's on the uh, on the watch um, you'll notice this is where the coin cell battery goes I, I don't have one in this one I just use it for prototyping not having a coin cell battery is fine it's just that uh, it takes a while to um, to get a satellite fix whereas the, if it had the coin cell battery in the back normally it takes you know like seconds like four or five seconds to get a fix but if it doesn't have a coin cell it could take you know 90 seconds or something like that still fine for prototyping um, this is the old lady screen with the pins on it just gonna go ahead and mount that right there this is the I'm just gonna zoom out so this is a trinket and the 400 milliamp battery same same unit as what's in the watch battery charger mount on the top um, this one has the on off switch powered on or soldered on I just use that for prototyping the watch doesn't have a on off switch um, when it loses power it just shuts off which is fine uh, one thing I forgot to show to charge this um, you just stick a micro USB cable right into the trinket right there and that uh, charges it so it'll go from a dead battery to um, fully charged in about four hours I wore this today and uh, under normal circumstances like the um, I had the big the big letters or the big numbers on the front and uh, the GPS was disabled it was only turning on for about 20 seconds at the top of every hour it does that automatically and uh, I got 16 hours out of it and it still wasn't uh, the battery wasn't dead yet so I'm expecting you know I'm hoping for about 20 I'll uh, I'll see how it goes I'm going to zoom in here a little bit and you can start to see some of the components as they go on. So this is the multicolor LED. It's got four pegs, one for ground and then one for each of red, blue and green. Go ahead and mount that there. This is the temperature sensor, very small. It's a DS18B20. Pretty accurate. Okay, so now these guys need some resistors. So the LED needs a 220 ohm resistor on each of the red, the blue, and the green. They're easier to mount before all the wire shows up. Those are two twenties. The way that the wiring for the temperature sensor it requires a one four point seven kilo ohm resistor between the power and the input pin. So there's that. I'm just gonna run the ground to the LED right now because it's easier to get at without the rest of the wires. So this is the ground on the LED right there. Okay, so now I'm gonna start wiring this up so I'm gonna get the the ground from the trinket off of the pin at the end 
dots. Power comes from this guy. So that's the trinkets powering the board. You go ahead and hook up the GPS because that's probably one of the easier ones to get out of the way. So the ground to the ground and the power to the power. Okay, good. So now the RX RX on the GPS goes into number six on the trinket. And the TX goes into number eight right beside it. Okay, so that's the GPS. Now I'm going to go ahead and run the wires to the, the buttons. So the trinket has uh, the ability you can pull the input pins high through software so you don't have to use a pull up or pull down resistor. You can just hook it up with a couple wires, the buttons. So those guys are grounded. Now the input on B1 I have going into number three and the input on button two I have going into number four. Okay. So now we'll do the LEDs. So the LEDs I wanted to be able to write analog. I didn't want them full on or full off because they're, these LEDs are pretty bright. I didn't really want it to be that bright. So I had to use the pulse width modulation pins and those uh, good set to use. They're all close together were uh, 9, 10, and 11. So I'm going to put the red into number 9. Green into number 10. And blue into number eleven. So that's the uh, that's the LED. Okay, the next one is the temperature sensor. So for that, I need to ground it right here. And then run a power on the other side. Okay, so then the input pin, the center pin, there's a resistor running from the power into the center pin. And the way that you wire it, you just get a wire right on the center pin and then put it, I have it listening on number, number five if I can get in there. So that's the temperature sensor. So now a lot of the wires comes from the display. So I'm going to go ahead and get that guy running. So ground, ground. Power and the power. So then the next one is data. It's going to A3. It's going to pick it up and make sure I get it right. Good. Because the, all the other ones just go right beside that first one. So, clock. That one. The 
PC. Next one. And reset. Next one. And CS is on number 12. Okay. So now that's everything wired. So I should be able to turn it on. I'm just going to turn this guy on and get his GPS going. Okay. So now let's go ahead and turn this power switch on. There we go. Okay. So now, yep. I'm just going to go to the screen that has the seconds. So there's the temperature. And you can see here that the time is synchronized. So, so right now they're getting the GPS, they're, they're getting synchronized GPS time. So, so on the, the watch, because it's got a GPS fix, it's, it's giving me the coordinates down here. This one, it'll be a little bit slower to get a fix because it doesn't have the coin cell in the back, but I would expect within about a minute it should get be able to get a fix. And, uh, and I'm indoors. It would be a lot quicker if I was out, outside. I just want to show you what this looks like from the side. So there's a lot of wire there. There's probably about 24 wires, I, I believe I counted. And uh, so 24 wires, soldering connection at each end, so it's 50 solder joints plus a couple more for the resistors. So there's a lot of uh, lot going on in between these two cuffs. Anyway, um, this uh, the, the prototype has now got a GPS fix. It's got a weak one. You can see the, the, the LED is pulsing white. So that's um, right now it's probably getting an H drop of above two, which is still decent, but it's, it's not like right now on the screen, it's telling me it's, it can only see six satellites and it's got an H drop of 0.8. So it, it's coming along. I would expect that within, if I left this on for another two or three minutes, it would be probably hitting eight or nine, maybe even 10 satellites. Anyway, that is, uh, that's my video. Hope you liked it. Follow me on Twitter. Thank you.